So, this video is um, under our new brand. Yay! Um, you can see it up here. We've got a new background, new logos, new brand. Um, I'm not going to go into that. That's not the point of this video. But at least it's a step forward from the old branding. So, new brand, new background. Exciting. Um, this video, though, is luckily SQL, um, which is much nicer than the PowerShell ones I was doing before. Um, this one actually came out of a client that was um, trying to do a bulk insert in SQL Server um, and they wanted an identity column adding to their bulk insert. Doesn't work nicely. They'd been on Google. They got the worst advice possible from Google. Um, so I thought it would make a good video. It probably won't. It'll bore people, but I liked it. So I'm going with it. Um, so yeah, so basically this is using bulk insert um, in a SQL statement, trying to get it into a table that has a, an identity column, um, or adding an identity to the bulk insert once it's been done. Um, so if I go straight to SQL, you'll also see the little funky background. I, it's not that funky. I was bored. Um, I quite like it though. So, okay, we're just going to get a test set of data. Um, this is quite a good way of getting um, just test data if you just want a quick list of numbers. There's better ways, there's other ways. I quite like this one. Um, Sys allocation units will always have X number of rows in it. Um, you cross join it to itself, you're gonna get a massive amount of rows back. So in this case, if I join it to itself, I'm gonna get roughly uh, 40,000 rows coming out of my database. So if I kind of squish down here, there you go, 40,000 rows. So. Just running a row number across the cross join of allocation units to itself, um, we end up with about 40,000 rows. I only want 9999. So I'm just kind of going to do this funky little query here that will get me a weird data set that I can import into my SQL Server. So you can kind of see I'm using the identity I just got and basically saying replace that with itself um, plus a string, and obviously I have to convert that to a string to add it, otherwise you're doing an int to a string and it doesn't like it. Um, so we're effectively getting the row number, so you can see kind of down here, row 14 is 14 plus A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Um, so I'm doing the row number plus A, B, C, D, E, F, G just to kind of give me some data. And I'm gonna get 9,999 of them. Um, and this will do just as a test bit of data, so I am just going to, um, throw that into notepad and then save this off. I've got a ctemp folder, um, you can put it anywhere but I'm just going to put it in there called import. Um, and that's the data I'm going to import. So um, basically this is the problem that the client had. Um, they were running an import using bulk insert, yes they could use SSIS. Um, Due to what they were doing, how they were doing it, SSIS really wasn't that good choice. Um, it would have been far too dynamic um, within SSIS and it would have caused them a lot of problems and a lot of kind of pain for what should have been quite a quick task. So it was easier just to do in SQL. But anyway, um, let's imagine we have a table. Simple table, um, drop if exists, 2016 and above. If you've got anything below that, um, if object ID is not null, drop table, whatever. Um, create a table. I'm just going to put one column in it. It's just called raw data. Um, it's varchar 100, just so I know it'll accept all the data that I've just put into that notepad. Um, so if we now have a single column table, we can do a bulk insert from the file we just created um, and throw it into that table. That will work fine, nice and quick, 9999 rows. Um, have a quick look in the table, and we have data. Now. This is basically where the problem came in. They wanted this to have an identity on it. Now, ignore the fact that I've kind of got a kind of false identity on the front of each of my records. In theirs, this was just random data. This was kind of like, imagine you've just done select star from some table in AdventureWorks. Um, there was no numerical values in it. There was no kind of any identity value present that you could have dug out of the data. Um, and because it wasn't their data, they couldn't go in and kind of manipulate it in order to add in um, identity values either. So they just had to kind of import it and they wanted an identity column on it. So a bit of a pain. Um, so what they tried is what everybody tries. So drop it and recreate the table. But this time we're going to recreate it with an identity column in place. So we've got an ID int identity. Um, you don't need the 1-1 one, one on here, by the way. A lot of people kind of think you need to do that. You don't. 
Um, by default, it just does one one anyway, so you can just get away with into identity. So I've just created that table. Um, but now, if you try and do the same import statement, this is going to fail. Okay, big red errors everywhere, um, all manner of nastiness. So basically, it can't do that because the bulk insert has to match the schema of the thing it's throwing its data into. So in this case, it doesn't because we know our text file only has one column in it um, based on this row terminator. So we can't put it into a two column table, even though you can't insert into this anyway. Bulk insert doesn't accommodate for that. It can't work it out. It thinks there's two columns. It goes, you don't have two columns. It throws a hissy fit. So this doesn't work. And this was basically their problem. They wanted this to work. So what they kind of found um, on the internet was basically terrifying. Um, the advice they got um, on the posts they were looking at, um, this actually came from Stack Overflow, um, usually incredibly good for advice. This just happened to be appalling. Um, so what I'm going to do is create our original table again with just the one column so we know we can bulk insert into this. Okay, It's going to match the bulk insert. World is good. It's going to be able to throw data in. So I'm going to throw the data in. So we get our 9999 rows. And then you can see, because it's just crept onto the bottom of my screen, um, the recommendation was then to add an identity column to it. It's so basically to do an alter table add identity. Um, I mean, this works. Don't get me wrong, it works. So if we look at our table currently, we've just got our data. If we actually alter that and add an identity to it, that works fine. And we now have an identity column. Okay, you can see our identity column. Okay, so the world looks good. Um, but this, I mean, it's not a solution. Um, if you want to run this over and over, so you want to have it kind of repeatable, so you might want it in a proc, for example. Um, your proc now becomes nasty by definition. Um, you effectively need to do a check first and say, does this column exist? If it exists, drop it because the bulk insert is going to fail. Um, once you've dropped it, then do the insert, then do the reapply again. So you're effectively kind of doing mass schema changes. You're dumping a column, doing the bulk insert, re-adding the column again. Not good practice. Um, so I've created the proc anyway, um, just for fun. So if I kind of squidge out a bit, you'll be able to see. Um, create procedure. And then, honestly, I would recommend doing this kind of more properly. So I would say kind of look at the sys internal tables. So um, from sys columns, join sys tables, and basically just say, for this table, does this column exist? So an if exists, then drop, otherwise whatever. But um, just because I didn't want to do this anyway, and I don't think this is a valid procedure to run, I've kind of short-circuited it with a begin, try, and catch, because I know that you know if this doesn't exist, it will fail, but it won't then do anything bad, because it will get caught, and it will just move on. So begin, try, um, alter table, drop column. So if the column exists, it will drop it. If not, it's going to throw an error, but this will just fake catch it, um, and it will move on. So then it will do the bulk import, which we now know will work because that ID column no longer exists. Once it's done, go and add the column back in again and then return the data from the table. So if I kind of create this procedure and then run it, you'll now see that that kind of works and I can run this repeatedly. So you can see it will just keep adding data in. And if I kind of expand this a bit so you can see, plus this one, um, you'll see we can just get tons and tons of rows and the identity will follow um, the row number. So we are adding an identity. I mean, that is valid. It's just a horrendous way of doing it. And what makes it worse is the client actually had the problem that they were trying to pass this data forwards. And when they passed it forward, they wanted the identity maintaining. So let's imagine that this data is going to go into a final table. Um, it's kind of like a very, very poor ETL. But it's going to go into a final table. So what we're going to do here is we're going to basically say, okay, we've got um, the ID part, which is effectively our, our identity from the import. Um, that's going to be our primary key. Again, probably a poor choice, but we're not concerning ourselves with that. Um, good choice for primary key, just not clustered. Um, but then we're going to split out the data we've received into a number part and a value part, just to kind of give the very vague indications of an ETL. So... What we can now do is we can basically say, okay, um, 
we're going to split that data up. We're going to take the ID part. We're going to take the number part, um, which is what this effectively does. It says go and get the data up to the to the A in our string. So it's going to get the number part. Um, this part is basically saying go and get the data after the A. So it's going to get the string part. So if I kind of have a look at this data, you'll see it's just going to split my data into the ID column. And then the text that we had is now split into two columns. Um, so we can throw that into this table. We've got just shy of 50,000 rows because that's what we had in our import table after running the proc many, many times. So what we can now do, because again, we're kind of running a fake ETL here, um, we clear down our import table. So we're just going to do a delete. In the real world, a delete maintains your identity. If you truncate, different matter. Okay, truncate will obviously wipe out your identity and start it from one. A delete does not affect your identity. So a delete is fine. We clear down our import table. We remove the 50,000 rows. The world is happy. But the problem is, though, now, because our proc is basically saying dump the identity column, import the data, add the identity column, we're effectively then well, we're reseeding the identity back to one because we're creating it from scratch. So if I run this proc again, you're going to see my identity starts again at one. OK, so we've now kind of got a very kind of screwy identity, which means if we then try and insert this into our table, we're going to get primary key clashes. Because we're back down to one and we've basically specified we want to maintain that identity value all the way through. Therefore, we don't want it to be the case that we reseed it. I mean, that's the whole point. So. This is now causing issues. So not only are you doing a lot of schema changes in order to do this drop column and add column again, um, you're also potentially messing up a whole ETL. So we don't want to do this. I mean, this is just bad. So the actual better way that um, that I've used before that I kind of recommended to them, um, which is what I suggest to anyone else doing this, is basically this. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop our table again. But this time, I'm going to create it with my identity column. Now, as we saw at the start, this doesn't work when we do the bulk insert. It doesn't like it because it doesn't match the schema. But we're basically going to trick the bulk insert. So we create this with an identity. OK, this doesn't change. But what we're now going to do is we're going to create a view. And that view is going to sit on top of our table. But the view is only going to refer to one column. So effectively now this view is now an object which is a single column object. So what we're going to do, if you haven't guessed already, is bulk insert into the view. So we're not bulk inserting into the table that's got the identity on it because that's two columns, doesn't like that. We're going to bulk insert into the view because the view just has the one column. So when it does the quick check, it goes, yep, one column to one column, I can do this. So when we do this bulk insert, that works fine. Okay. And now if we check our underlying table, not the view, the underlying table, you can see the table has actually added our identity column itself. So we now have an identity working in the background without doing these schema changes, um, but just by bulk inserting into a view. Now the genius of this is because we can obviously now make a nice simple proc. So we don't have to do the checks, if exists, drop column, all that nonsense. Um, our proc simply just becomes bulk insert into the view, select from table. OK, nice and simple, much, much better. If we run this, there we go. It's going to insert another 9,999 rows. We can do this a few times and you'll now see that we'll start getting some kind of huge amounts of data in. So we're now back to the just shy of 50,000 data because I've run this repeatedly. Um, and you can see our identity matches that. So we're on the 49995. So what we're going to do now is again move to our kind of fake ETL where we're going to move it into our final table. So I've created the same final table here um, with our primary key clustered on the ID. So we're going to maintain our identity and then the two split out columns. Um, if we do that same insert, that's all good. We know that's going to work, so that worked last time. That's absolutely fine. But this is where it then becomes nicer, because if we now, as part of our little fake ETL, we actually delete from our raw import table, um, the raw table has an identity column on it. 
So when we do the delete, we do not reseed the identity. Okay, and because we're not dropping the column, we don't reseed it. This column stays in the table. This table doesn't get touched. All we're doing is deleting the data. So when we remove this 50,000 rows, just shy, we maintain the identity. So if we now run the import again, what you'll actually see is we start from 49996 because we've maintained that identity. So now what we can do is carry on with our ETL and the world is good. It just adds it in. The identity is um, kept within our import. So this was basically just a kind of quick, um, just a series of demos, just kind of showing that, well, A, not all information on Google is correct. Um, and B, there are sometimes nice ways of doing things that you may not think of just by kind of tricking SQL Server. So if you do want to do a bulk insert into a table with an identity and you want to maintain that identity pushing forwards, um, don't start writing scripts that do just mad things like dropping columns, recreating columns, um, that start kind of tweaking your data to the point that you manually have to maintain identities or you have to kind of intervene anywhere. Um, there's usually a nicer way. And the other thing this kind of shows as well is that um, you can bulk insert into a view. Okay, it's nice and happy. It will work as long as your view matches the bulk insert. So in this case, we had one column coming in, one in the view. That works fine. You can actually have defaults. You can have um, identities. You can have all manner of stuff on the underlying table. The bulk insert won't care. It will insert into the view. Your table will take care of the rest. So it's just a much, much nicer way of doing it. So if you ever want a bulk insert, and keep an identity or create an identity, um, this is the way to do it. Okay, so that was it. That was a nice, simple demo. Um, and as with all of my videos, um, if you want um, any other information, um, we've got blogs, um, we do training, we do all manner of stuff. Um, Qtech.co.uk, it's our new website, our new brand. Um, head over there, the link's in the description. Um, anything you could want, just go over there, have a look around, see if you want anything, see if you want to contact us, we don't mind, ask any old questions, um, stick stuff in the comments, um, and that's it. See you later.